Good afternoon, everyone. Will the Joint Committees of Public Safety and Intergovernmental Military Affairs and Judiciary please come to order? Today is Wednesday, April 17, 2024. We're in conference room 225 at the State Capitol. We welcome our committee members and members in the audience and those joining us on Zoom. For all testifiers, including those on Zoom, we ask that you stand on your written testimony. If your oral testimony is different from your written testimony, the time limit for each testifier will be one minute. The content, including the hearing notice, copies of the bills, and testimony can be found on the legislature's website. The live video stream and archive of this hearing can be found on the Senate's YouTube channel. Decision-making will occur after we hear from all testifiers. If we have a catastrophic technical failure, we will resume this hearing in this conference room on Thursday, April 18, 2024, at 10.45 a.m. We only have one item on our joint hearing. That's HCR 195, requesting the Department of Law Enforcement to conduct a study to determine if xylazine testing shifts should be excluded from the state's definition of drug paraphernalia. On our list of testifiers, we have Jared Radula from DLE, or Deputy Director, I should say. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jared Radula. I'm the Deputy Director for the Department of Law Enforcement, and our department will stand on its testimony in support of the resolution. Okay, thank you very much. You. From the Behavioral Health Administration for Department of Health, submit testimony in support, and Alan Johnson from testifying from the Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition in support. That completes our list of registered testifiers. Is there anyone else in the audience or on Zoom land that wishes to testify on this measure? If not, members, questions? All right, if not, we'll just roll into decision-making. Um, okay. okay, the co-chairs have conferred. A recommendation is to pass unamended. Any further discussion? Okay, if not, uh, Chair Wakai, your vice chair votes aye. Unamended. Oh, sorry, just... I vote yes, Senator Elefante. Aye. Yes, Senator Fukunaga. Aye. Senator Rose? Aye. Senator Awa is excused. Chair, your recommendations adopted. Same recommendation for JDC members. Any questions or concerns? If not, Senator Gabbard. Uh, Chair Rhodes? Aye. Vice Chair Boots, aye. Senator Elefante? Aye. Senator San Buenaventura? Aye. And Senator Awa? Excused. Measure passes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. This concludes our joint hearing at 3 p.m. Aloha and great afternoon, everyone. Will the Committee on Public Safety and Intergovernmental Military Affairs please come to order? Today is Wednesday, April 17, 2024. We're at the State Capitol in Conference Room 225. I'd like to welcome our committee members and those joining us on Zoom. A few housekeeping items for all testifiers, including those on Zoom. We ask that you stand on your written testimony. If your oral testimony is different from your written testimony, the time limit for each testifier will be one minute. The content, including the hearing notice and copy of the bills and testimony, can be found, I should say, resolutions could be found on the legislature's website. The live video stream and archive of this hearing can be found on the Senate's YouTube channel. Decision-making will occur after we hear from all testifiers. If we have a catastrophic technical fa failure, we will resume this hearing in this conference room on Thursday, April 18, 2024 at 10.45 a.m. Move on to our agenda. And thank you for those in the public as we had to adjust the time to 3.05, so thank you for your patience. We'll start off with our first resolution, which is HCR 87, requesting the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency to install a new emergency siren near the intersections of Amakua Street and Ahuhu Street and Upper Pacific Palisades. On our list of testifiers, we have Larry Verwe, Chair of the Pro City Neighborhood Board in support, and Charmaine Duran, the Vice Chair of the Pro City Neighborhood Board in support. Is there anyone else that wishes to testify on this? Okay. If not, move on to our next. No one to ask questions of. We'll move on to our next one, HCR 134, directing the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency to submit a grant request to the Federal Emergency Management Agency for rockfall mitigation in Warnlow Gardens and Warnlow Valley. On our list of testifiers from the Department of Law Enforcement, Deputy Director Michael Vincent. 
Okay, submits uh, testimony support. Uh, Chair Don Chang from DLNR in support. Let's see her here. And B.A. McClintock in support. Is there anyone else that wishes to testify on this resolution? Okay, if not, no one to ask questions of. We'll move on to our next one. HDR 52. This is urging the Department of Law Enforcement, Fire Departments, and Police Departments of each county, humane societies in each county, and media organizations throughout the state to collaborate to create and disseminate public service and announcements to highlight the dangers and advocate against the use of illegal fireworks in order to protect the health and safety of the community, pets, and wildlife. On our list of testifiers from DLE, Deputy Director Michael Vincent in support, and Lori Ann Santos in support. Is there anyone else that wishes to testify? I'm sorry. I read that wrong. I had it mixed up here. Was there anyone else that wishes to testify on HCR 52? Okay. If not, I'll move on to HCR 124. This is requesting the Department of Law Enforcement to convene a search and rescue working group to develop and make recommendations to deter hikers from entering illegal hiking trails and to address rising search and rescue costs facing the state and counties due to increased illegal hiking traffic. On this, we have Michael Vincent, DLE, Deputy Director, in support, and Lorianne Santos in support. And I also stand corrected, members, for HCR 52. Um, it was reversed. It was Michael Vincent, Chair Chang, and BA McClintic all in support for HCR 52. But on this one, those are the, all, the only testifiers. Is there anyone else that wishes to testify on HCR 124? Okay. If not, it brings us to our last item, which is HR 160, requesting the Women's Correction, Corrections Implementation Commission to develop a strategy and make recommendations to reduce the number of women incarcerated at the Women's Correctional Community Correctional Center by 25% over the next five years. On our list of testifier, we have Trish Morikawa in support uh, from the judiciary. Uh, next person is Erin Arbinson from the judiciary in support. Tommy Johnson, director of DCR. In, yes. Okay, thank you. And, and your name? Pamela Sturz. Pamela Sturz, thank you, Pamela. Uh, former Governor Lingo. Aloha and welcome. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Elefante, Chair Wakai, and members. We were just talking as we were listening to the other resolutions about the wide span of issues that you have to deal with throughout the session. And so we're extremely grateful that you found the time to take up HCR 160. Uh, this resolution will be a catalyst for the transition that we all seek from a strictly or overly punitive model of criminal justice, as it applies especially to women, to a rehabilitative model. We believe we have the organizations in the community with the proper support. We also have people in the judiciary, as you heard, who are very supportive of this movement toward a more rehabilitative model, and this will get the ball rolling. So please adopt this, uh, adopt HCR 160, and let's all get the ball rolling. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Lingo. Dr. Lynn Babington, testifying for Women's Prison Project. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair Elefante and Chair Wakai. Um, I'm the president of Chaminade University and also a Marianist. And our uh, education is really focused on educating students for service, justice, and peace. I'm also a member of the Women's Prison Project. And as former Governor Lin Lingle just mentioned, it's really important that we begin now to set some goals. We haven't set goals before, and that's the only way we will have the opportunity to change the way that we deal with um, women in prison. And um, women offenders are very different than men offenders. Most of our women in prison are not violent offenders and therefore would benefit greatly from the opportunity to be outside in the community with support from our community groups um, and uh, work on rehabilitation from that standpoint. So I strongly urge you to accept this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Babington. Next up, joining us by Zoom is Carrie Ann Shiroto from ACLU. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members, Carrie Ann Shiroto, Policy Director with ACLU of Hawaii. We strongly support this measure. We think it's really important to invest in data-driven 
reforms to reduce the number of women as well as men in our jails and prisons as we've done successfully within our youth system. I just like to highlight though one particular possible amendment is that we should have a goal and that the 25% is actually low. We should be aiming for 50%. It is actually doable. And if you look at other states that have implemented bail reform or having the judiciary strictly adhere to even some of our bail statutes that are in place, we could decrease the number of women in our jails and prison, particularly in our jails pretrial population. In states that have implemented pretrial reforms, you've looked at a decrease from anywhere from 20 to 40%. So that 25% is actually really low. And we've actually asked that you hire the bar um, because we're looking at women who are mothers, people have been exposed to trauma and we can do better. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Lauren Walker in support from the Hawaii Re Friends of Restorative Justice. Uh, Noriko Namiki testifying from YWCA Oahu in support. Uh, Deborah Spencer for Adult Friends for Youth in support. Virginia Hinshaw in support. Linda Rich. Aloha. Um, you have my written testimony, so I won't read it to you again. Um, I wanted to say a couple of things. One is that um, after decades as a mental health and addiction provider, um, I have worked with so many women who had cycle, cycled in and out of prison until they finally got the treatment that they needed, the addiction treatment or the mental health services. Many of the women, a majority of women in our prison right now need that kind of assistance. And there are many programs that have demonstrated in other places um, that research has shown that women do respond to community-based treatment with appropriate supervision. We know there will always be women who need to be incarcerated. However, we also know that the majority of women could fare well in community-based programs. Um, there's an old saying, a, a joke that says, ready, fire, aim. We would like to ready, aim, fire, and really target a goal Thank for you. this process. Thank you. Lori Tom in support, Edgy Lee in support. That completes our list of registered testifiers. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to testify? Yes, we'll go with you and then followed by, go ahead. Go ahead, Angela. Yeah. Aloha, Angela Melody Young. Testifying on behalf of Kapalama Neighborhood Security Watch. Um, in strong support. So um, Kapalama Neighborhood Security Watch trains with the community policing team um, in matters of public safety in our neighborhood. Um, and uh, um, so this really affects us um, when the correction system and the uh, justice system doesn't appropriately correct offenders and they keep offending. So um, Kapalama Neighborhood Security Watch testifies to improve institutional biases against incarcerated women and marginalized groups. Outdated policies seeking to punish incarcerated persons feeds into the disparities and inequities affecting the corrections and justice system. Ultimately, we should make laws to advance equity and liberty for the incarcerated, provide mental health and behavior health resources for the imprisoned, set forward policies to supply resources for programs with nonprofits and businesses to provide extra support if the state cannot handle all the burden. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha and welcome. Aloha, thank you. Good afternoon to the committee, to all here. I did submit written testimony, but I would like to emphasize a part of that. Most of you if all- If you can say your name for the Oh, record. Tadia Rice, my apologies. Uh, most of you already know the statistics and the information and why we're here in support of HCR 160. One thing I'd like to tell you is that from my experience volunteering at Women's for 10 years, the longer women stay in without receiving services and benefits, training, um, development, mental health, the worse they are when they get out. So to mitigate how difficult it already is when they get out, it would be very, very helpful while they're in to receive the services that they need and to receive it quickly, efficiently, on time, so that when they are able to be released, they have somewhere to go and something to do, but they are prepared and ready. And that's what this particular 
uh, bill would help do. Thank you. Thank you. That completes our list of registered testifiers. Or anyone else on Zoom land or here in person that wishes to testify in HCR 160? If not, members, questions? Okay. If not, a uh, short recess for uh, decision making. Reconvening the Committee on Public Safety and Intergovernment and Military Affairs. We're ready to make decisions. Uh, for our first one on HCR 87, um, do I have to read the title? Okay. Okay. <laughs> They're all long titles. Okay. For HCR 87, um, the recommendation here is to pass unamended. Uh, any further discussion? If not, Chair, your Vice Chair votes aye. I vote yes, Senator Fukunaga. Aye. Senator Rose. Aye. Senator Awa is excused. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For our next one, HR 134, um, Chair's, rec here, Chair's recommendation here is to pass with tech amendments. Any further discussion? If not, Chair, your Vice Chair votes aye. Well, the four members present, any opposition or reservations? Have you seen and heard none? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, for HR 52, uh, Chair's recommendation on this one is to pass with tech amendments. Any further discussion? If not, Chair, your Vice Chair votes aye. Voting the presence of four members. Are there any, op uh, is there any opposition or reservation to the Chair's recommendation? Having seen and heard, non-Chair recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. For HCR 124, uh, Chair's recommendation on this one, or your Vice Chair's recommendation on this one, I should say, is to pass unamended. Any further discussion? If not, Vice Chair votes aye. Noting the members uh, present, any opposition or reservation to the chair's recommendation? Having seen and heard none, chair, your recommendation is adopted. And for our last one on HCR 160, thank you to all those who provided comment and were in person here to testify on that. Uh, Vice Chair's recommendation is to pass with tech amendments. Any further discussion? Okay. If not, chair, your vice chair votes aye. Noting the presence of four members of the committee, any opposition or reservations to the chair's recommendation? I haven't seen or heard none. Your recommendations adopted. Okay, that concludes our business for today. We are adjourned.